Hello and welcome to part number nine of my read and work through of Herbert Wolf's Generating Functionality. I have finished reading through chapter one and now I'm going to start the exercises at the end of chapter one. So let's see, exercise one. Find the ordinary power series generating functions of each of the following sequences in simple closed form. In each case, the sequence is defined for all n greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and the first one is a n is n. So let's see, so a n equals n. So what does this mean? I'm guessing this means power series generating function. This means we're going to be looking at sum from n equals zero to infinity of a n x to the n and this is our function let's call it fx I think this is what we're doing and the idea of this so find the ordinary power series generating functions of each of the following sequences so a n is a sequence and we define this function f in a simple closed form okay so they want us to do something with this some manipulation to get it into a simple closed form. So, well, so in this case, so fx is so from n equals zero to infinity n x to the n. Hmm. Well, this is appears to be related to the derivative of. Just that, that's obviously related. So maybe that's the easiest way to go about it. Maybe not. Um, maybe there's also a clever trick. So what is, for example, x fx? minus fx. So I reckon this might also help. So xfx minus fx is so xfx sum of n equals zero to infinity nx to the n minus sum from n equals zero to infinity nx to the n. And I'm going to simplify this by putting this x inside here. So n to the x to the n plus 1 minus n x to the n. But I want to have the same powers here and here so I can combine the coefficients of the powers of x. So as n goes from 0 to infinity, this power here goes from 1 to infinity. So I'm going to write this as sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n minus 1 x to the n minus and this stays the same but I'm going to take the n equals 0 term because when n is 0 this is just 0 so I can just remove it so if I combine if I combine these we get so n minus 1 minus n x to the n. So this is just so n minus 1 minus n is minus 1 so minus aha uh -huh. so this was x minus 1 times fx so not quite getting both on the same screen x minus 1 fx and this thing here, well, it's not quite, it's not quite the, um, well, if it was from n equals zero, so if it's from n equals zero to infinity, x to the n, 
that's just a geometric series, it would be, it'd be that. But it's from n equals 1, so you have to multiply through by x. So this is um, minus, minus 1 over 1 minus x. And so we can solve this now for fx. It's just going to be fx equals 1 over 1 minus x squared. I think this was an example in chapter 1 earlier on. Though I'm not sure how they, if they proved it, if they proved it this way or if they um, used differentiation. I think you may have used differentiation actually. But this way worked as well. It's a similar different trick but, uh, that allowed us to solve it without using any calculus. But uh, I reckon it would be easy to do for calculus as well. I just took the. Oh, it's not even worth doing, is it? It's ever so simple. You know, just differentiate this and multiply it through by x, and you've got the same thing. So, yeah, and it's easy to work out. So, let's go on to B. B. This time we have AN is equal to alpha n plus beta. Um, hmm, things are going to depend on whether alpha and beta are non-zero. So we're going to have some cases there. Cases are going to be involved. Um, hmm, so let's see. So that, this time I'm going to, I'm going to keep following fx. It's a nice Function name n equals zero to infinity alpha n plus beta x to the n. Well, I can already. Uh huh. I think it wants us to build on our previous results, so I can already um, split this up like so. Plus beta. So we know what this bit is from what we did before. It was 1 over 1 minus x squared. And this is going to be 1 over 1 minus x. So here we're going to have simply, wasn't there an x? Was it x over 1 minus x squared? Let me just go back and check. I think it should have been. I should have had an x here. I missed off my x. And then, um, so it should have been that. So because I've gotten a little bit confused here, I'm going to quickly do that diff differentiation argument as well. So, okay, sorry to bore you with this, but just checking it for my sanity. So, so we um, 1 over 1 minus x, we know what this, we know this one. And we differentiate this, so if we differentiate both sides, the left hand side is going to become, it's going to become minus 1 over 1 minus x squared, and then we're going to have another minus outside because the coefficient of x in this linear factor is negative. So it's just this. That's the left derivative of the left hand side. Um, the right hand side, going to have n equals 0 to infinity n x to the n minus 1. And if we multiply through both sides by x, we get that. So yeah, that was right. Did need the x up there. And that works the same way. So, this is x, and here we have beta, so, yeah, so it's going to be alpha x over 1 minus x squared plus beta over 1 minus x. Hmm. It's 
kind of like it's pretty similar to the and this is a polynomial in n and I wonder I wonder what happens if you do it to a, a polynomial in general it must be maybe there's a general form uh, that's, ah, that's, that's where we're going here the question pot e is uh, a n is p n where p n is a given polynomial of degree n so cool let's see where this goes to see now it wants us to do n squared so that's a nice thing about these, these, these exercises in books they often take you through examples which are useful which weren't covered in a chapter so it's nice that it's worth knowing though not always books differ on the usefulness of their exercises so let's try this this is going to be a bit different no it's probably pretty similar but it's a bit I'm not sure I've done this before so this is one that we haven't yet seen so I think if we carry on the to go along with the hmm, derivative methods probably the best way here I could probably still do it algebraically exactly the same way as before however I think um, calculus way is the best way to go so well we know x over 1 minus x squared we know that did that that was from part one so differentiate both sides d by dx now what's the derivative of this ugh <laughs> um, I'll have to wear that out derivative of the right hand side is going to be x to the n minus 1 so we're going to want to multiply through both sides by x so whatever the function is so fx is going to be x d by dx x over minus x squared and I just have to work that out embarrassingly I don't know the quotient rule off by heart but I can work it out pretty quickly so So if I say I want to differentiate h over g, and I'm going to call it f, so gf equals h, I differentiate both sides of this, well I remember the product rule, so it's more symmetrical, you don't have to remember quite as much, and then I can rearrange this for f prime. So let's see, gf prime equals h prime minus g prime f. So f prime is um, uh huh. So and because f is h over g so I can put that back in so I just put g h prime minus g prime h over g squared there we are so now I've got the product rule that's how we always work it out every single time that I use it and I, I never remember it I'm not sure I've ever memorized it even for an exam I just always worked it out like that Let's see, so well, I'm differentiating x over 1 minus x squared. Um, so this is my h and this is my g. So I want g h 1 minus x squared. Uh, no, g h prime. h prime is just 1 minus g prime h. Uh, what's what's the derivative of this going to be? It's going to be 2 minus 2, 1 minus x by the chain rule. So that's going to become plus 
t1 minus x, I believe, and divided by g squared, which is 1 minus x to the 4. Okay. We can divide it at 1 minus x at the top and bottom, so 1 minus x plus 2x over 1 minus x cubed. And this is 1 plus x over 1 minus x cubed. Hmm. Really? And then we need to multiply through by x. So is it really the case that fx is equal to x plus x squared over 1 minus x cubed? Doesn't seem as elegant as I would be expecting. Hmm. Perhaps I can verify it by uh, the same sort of algebraic manipulation as I did before. So just see if, see if it works. So. If I take 1 minus x, fx. So, n from 0 to infinity, n squared x to the n, minus n from 0 to infinity, n squared x to the n plus 1, just as I did before. Let's see if this gets me anywhere. Take n from 1 instead, and this will become n minus 1 squared x to the n. So we're going to get some from n equals, well, again, take from 1 because when n is 0, this term is 0. Uh, n squared minus n minus 1 squared x to the n. And what's this? This is n squared minus n squared minus 2n plus 1 equals 2n minus 1. Take sum from n is 1 to infinity 2n minus 1 x to the n. Hmm. And yeah, we, we're going to get So let's go back to our part A, because part A tells us what this is going to be. It's going to be 2x over 1 minus x squared plus 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x. And this is equal to, this was equal to 1 minus x f to the x, because that's what we were working out. And that tells us that fx is... Pretty sure this is right here, at least unless there are other mistakes. So then that would mean fx is equal to 2x over 1 minus x cubed minus x over 1 minus x squared. So small part of top and bottom by 1 minus x, 1 minus x over. Well, at least I'm not getting up 5x anymore. <laughs> um, 2x minus x, so that becomes x plus x squared. Yes, now that is the same as what I got. Doing it the differentiation way, let's find that I had that there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. got the same thing, hooray. So, hmm, where was my mistake before then when I, when I was working that out? I don't know, I've crossed it out now. So anyway. So I'm wondering, how might this lead to a general principle? We know we, what we're doing for, um, you know, you, you've got, you've got this, sum from n is zero to infinity is 1 over, 
Let's call this F um, zero. It's one minus X. And then we know that F one X, it's a function of X, is uh, we can work this out by taking the derivative of F zero X and then multiplying through by X. So, sort of in a similar notation as we did earlier, we would have that f k x, which would, by which I mean, sum from n equals zero to infinity, n to the k, x to the n, is going to be we're going to apply this operator k times to 1 over 1 minus x. But what is that? This is a closed form. But there must be a, a way of working out what this will be if we, if we keep doing this. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so I've spent a little bit of time playing with this. And I've come to a few, I've discovered a few things and a couple of ways of writing um, the coefficients in a nice form. But I'll just, I'll just quickly go through what I've, what I've discovered. Now, I think it's quite a difficult problem. So, so I have, I'm finding f k to be the sum from n equals zero to infinity n to the k, x to the n. So, f0, x, and this is, we've already worked these out, so f0, x, just, just have this, f1, x, from n equals 0 to infinity nx to the n this was x over 1 minus x squared and we also worked out f3x sum from n equals 0 to infinity n squared x to the n equals x over 1 minus x cubed so x plus x squared over 1 minus x cubed so we worked out sorry that's f2 worked out the first few um, and so, yeah, it's, it's quite a, a difficult problem. Um, some observations. So, it's quite clear that we have that fk is equal to x times d by dx of 1 over 1 minus x. So, x d by dx plus k times to that function. It's easy to check. Um, something else that we seem to be having is that the in the denominator here we're getting so it looks like we are going to have the fk is going to be some polynomial divided by 1 over divided by 1 minus x to the k plus 1 that's what we seem to be we seem to be getting that here so I'm going to define g k x to be 1 minus x to the k plus 1 of f k x. And uh, so we're expecting that g k x is going to be a polynomial all of the time. So let's, let's look at a few things that we can do here. So first idea I had is since I'd had some success in the earlier examples, of multiplying f k x by one minus x. So let's let's try this to a general in general. So f k. So this is going to be sum from n equals zero to infinity n to the k x to the n minus the sum from n equals zero to infinity n to the k x to the n plus one. So we want to rearrange this. So that we have same powers of x on this on each side. So I'm going to 
beyond this one. So when n is zero, this is just zero. So I'm going to take this term instead and then equals one to infinity. It doesn't change. Whoops. Can't read my own handwriting. It's got so messy. X to the n minus the sum from n equals zero to infinity. This one stays the same. Entered gay. X to the n plus one. Now, as n goes from one to infinity, um, n minus one goes from zero to infinity. So, so if I let n go from zero to infinity. then we need this to be n plus 1 for it to go. So an n plus 1 goes from 1 to infinity. So I'll replace n here with n plus 1. And then this one stays the same. And now we have sum with n going from 0 to infinity in both of them. And same powers of x. So combining these. What we'll have is, I'm going to take one of the x's out, so we'll get x times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity. So n plus 1 to the k minus n to the k x to the n. Okay, so this is, write down what this was again, this is 1 minus x fk x. That's what we started with. Now, if I expand out this bracket here by the binomial expansion, binomial coefficients, the n to the k term gets cancelled here. So all we need to do is sum from i equals 0 to k minus 1. And then we'll take k choose i, n to the i, x to the n. And I'll uh, swap the order of these sums around. So you get a sum from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of k choose i and the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n to the i x to the n. And this bit here is simply f i x. So we get a recurrence relation here or fk in terms of the earlier f's. So what we're going to have here, so this was, again, this was f, 1, one minus x times fkx is equal to x times the sum from i equals 0 to k minus 1, k choose i, fix. So fkx, we can write it in terms of the previous h is i fix. So we can write it in terms of all of the previous um, previous f's. However. It, I didn't, I wasn't able to use this to get anything useful in the long run. So I, I think this is quite nice and worth, worth remembering. And maybe a, a viewer will think of something clever to use this for. But for the time being, it uh, doesn't really help me. But it, I guess it, it helps me a little bit in that, you know, I was, I was talking earlier, I defined these, saying earlier, I defined these GKs as 1 minus x to the k plus 1 times fkx. This, this formula at least can be used to prove that the gk's are always going to be um, polynomials via induction because so if I remembering what gkx was I can plug the gk's and gi's into here making the necessary changes. So gk over 1 minus x to the k plus 1 is the same as fk. So we're going to get an equation here 
relating to GK, so this is going to be GI x over 1 minus x to the i plus 1. Um, so if I multiply both sides through by 1 minus x to the k plus 1, I'm going to get GKx is equal to x times i equals 0 to k minus 1, ki, k choose i, gix, 1 minus x. So we've taken, we multiplied through by 1 minus x to the k plus 1. Uh, this is going to get one of them. So we've got 1 here and we've got um, i plus 1 here and we're going to have k left over after we've used that. So it's going to be k minus 1 minus i. Okay, and so while i is between 0 and k minus 1, this is always a polynomial. And since g0, g0 x is just 1 minus x times f0x, which is 1 minus x times 1 over 1 minus x. So if g0 is just 1, it's a polynomial. This inductively allows us to see that gk is a polynomial because, so if g1, you could use this to calculate g1, you know, everything, every term in here is either a constant or a polynomial. And then g2 will be the same. And so you can use induction with this formula here to give us that the GKs are always going to be polynomials. So at least gives us that. So we always know it's going to be a polynomial GK divided by 1 minus x to the k minus 1. Now, so let's see what else. So I, yeah, so I, I was unable to use this to get any nice formulas for the coefficients of these GK. Um, I did try expanding this out and seeing what it did and what if it what kind of recurrence relationship it gave for the coefficients of gk x, um, but they're, they were pretty horrible to be fair. Um, and didn't seem very useful. But if, if anyone viewing it can think of a nice way to use this to answer our question nicely, that'd be really nice to hear hear about. Um, yeah, so that was the method of multiplying by. 1 minus x. So next method I looked at was trying to utilize the fact that fkx is equal to x d by dx k applied to 1 over 1 minus x and seeing what this does for the gk which is the thing I'm interested in because I want to know what this looks like when expressed as a rational polynomial as opposed to an infinite sum. So fk here is just equal to gkx over 1 minus x to the k plus 1, which is x times d by dx to the k. Um, ah, so I'm not going to write it like this, I'm just going to write it as equal to x times d by dx applied. So to the, to the previous one. So from this formula, it also follows that, um, well, we got this formula from this. This recurrence, oops, fk minus one x. So you take fk minus one, differentiate it, multiply it by x, you get fk. And that's what this, this means. Um, so clicking in, dk here over 1 minus x to the k. So we've, we've got a relationship here for the gks. Okay. So let's, let's look at this term here. So this is going to be differentiating a polynomial gk minus 1x over 1 minus x to the k, then multiplying through by x. So I'm going to look at Uh, what what that will look like in general. So let's say let's look at differentiating dx d by dx x to the alpha over one minus x to the beta. So I'm just going to use the product rule here. So this is 
alpha x to the alpha minus 1 over 1 minus x to the beta, differentiating the x to the alpha term, plus x to the alpha over 1 minus x to the beta plus 1, and then I need a beta out here. And this is what you get. You differentiate this. So this is equal to, I want, I want the 1 minus x to the beta plus 1 under both of them. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this by 1 minus x. So alpha x to the alpha minus 1, 1 minus x plus beta x to the alpha. All over 1 minus x to the beta plus 1. Um, if I'm interested in on the multiply everything through by x because I was interested in x times d by dx and x out here uh, this is going to become an alpha and this is an alpha plus 1 let's simplify this a little more this is let's get the powers of x together so this is alpha x to the alpha plus beta minus alpha x to the alpha plus 1 all over r minus x to the beta plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to use this. So this was just um, d by dx. This was x d by dx, x to the alpha over 1 minus x to the beta. So I'm going to use this here. To look at x d by dx of g k minus one x over one minus x to the k because we had this was equal to g k x over one minus x to the k plus one. We already had this here, um, and I'm going to need to know the coefficients of the, each of the polynomials. I need a notation for them, so I'm just going to write gk x. I'm going to always write this as sum from n equals zero to infinity of I'm going to gk n x to the n. This is going to be the coefficient of x to the n of gk x. So I'm going to look at what that's going to give us here, so it's x over d by dx. Um, so I'm going to write up g k minus 1 out in this font. Sum from n equals 0 to infinity of, so g k minus 1 x, um, so g k minus 1 n x to the n, and it's all divided by 1 minus x to the k. So this is equal to sum from n equals 0 to infinity g k minus 1 n and then x d by dx of x to the n over 1 minus x to the k. And this is the term we were just investigating up here. So let's see, this is going to be equal to sum from n equals 0 to infinity g k minus 1 n. So this is going to become, well the alpha here is an n, so it's going to have n x to the n plus beta is k, so k minus n x to the n plus 1 all over 1 minus x to the k plus 1. And this was equal to gkx over 1 minus x to the k plus 1. So let's multiply both sides here by 1 minus x to the k plus 1. And we'll cancel these out. And we have this. So let's write this out. So this 
what we got is pkx is the sum from n equals zero to infinity of g k minus one n n x to the n and then I'm going to write it into a second sum so plus sum n equals zero to infinity g k minus one n k minus n x to the n plus one okay so and I want to get the same power of x on both sides so let's see I then goes from 0 to infinity on this side n plus 1 goes from 1 to infinity so I'm going to look at the right hand side so it says n equals 0 to g k plus 1 n n, to the, n times x to the n plus I'm going to rewrite this as n equals 1 to infinity and replace n with n minus 1 so g k minus 1 n minus 1 k uh, plus 1 minus n x to the n so that now I can combine the two sums um, well when n is 0 here this whole term is 0 because we've got an n there so I've got to take this sum from n equals 1 as well so we get so from n equals 1 to infinity x to the n so n g k minus 1 n plus k plus 1 minus n g k minus 1 n minus 1 and since this is equal to g k x the coefficient of x to the n i.e. this term is equal to g k n so we get this recurrence relation for the coefficients of g k so g k n is equal to our k plus 1 minus n g k minus 1 n minus 1 plus n g k minus 1 n and we see this we see that this is fairly similar to the recurrence relation that we had for the, the partition numbers n and k in curly brackets it's also fairly it's also you know has a similar form to the um, binomial coefficients n choose k um, but I've, I've played around with this recurrence relation and the same trick that we used with n k and curly brackets to get it into a, a, a nice form doesn't really work here because you know we have both a k and an n as in the factor on this left hand term here which makes it difficult it means whichever variable we we try and uh get a, a formula in we, we always need a derivative so it doesn't i've not been able to use this recurrence relation here to get a nice formula for GKN however it can be used to quite quickly um, compute GKN for relatively large well larger n you know much more much more quickly than it was when we were able to calculate FKN first you know things like k equals 2 so let's see so so when k equals 0 um, I'm going to write it like a triangle so we know that g g zero x is just one, so this is going to correspond to the constant term of our polynomial. We're going to have zeros either side, zeros in that direction. I'm going to sort of do it like a uh, triangle. If k equals one, let's use this recurrence relation. So if we're after g one zero, okay, so k is one, so k plus one, you've got two. So if we're working at this value here, it can be 2 times that plus n times that. Well, n is 0, so it's going to be 0. This term here is going to be 1 times that plus 1 times that. And then 0 here, so k equals 2. This term here is going to be, well, this term here is going to be um, k plus 
2 plus 1 is 3, so 3 times that plus no times that, 0, 0, 2 times that plus 1 times that, 1 times that plus 2 times that, okay, plus 3, this term here is going to be 3 times that, 0 plus 1 times 1, 2 times 1 plus 2 times 1, 1 times 1 plus 3 times 0, and uh, continuing this way, so get, we're always going to get 1 down here, 1 over here, and this is going to be, that was 3 times 1 plus 2 times 4, 11, and this is 11 as well, oops, um, these are going out of line, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, that was just k equals 4, k equals 5, do that one as well, you're going to have 1, um, be 4 times 1 plus 2 times 11, 26, 3 times 11 plus 3 times 11, 66. And we always end up getting that it's symmetric as well. Um, which is, you know, something, uh, could be a bit of a surprise. Why should the coefficients of GK be symmetric? So what we've got here, we'll have, so from this, we know that F0, X, ones we already know. F one x. F we we already know these ones. X plus x squared over one minus x cubed, and then f three x. We didn't work this one out before, but this table gives us that it's going to be equal to x plus four x squared plus x cubed over one minus x to the four. Because from this one four one here, this was the constant row. Power x to the 1, x to the 2, x to the 3, x to the 4 and then we're going to have f5x is equal to x plus 11x squared plus 11x cubed plus x to the 4 over 1 minus x to the 5 and we can see that using this recurrence relation we could quite quickly calculate f6 and f7 and the numbers would start getting a bit big but you know using the computer you could calculate this very large very quickly hundreds of rows if you wanted so we have a quick and easy way of calculating the coefficients now at least but we don't have a formula for gkn but you know this is arguably if the formula was very messy and long then arguably this is, this is more useful and yeah we, we have this interesting phenomenon that it appears to be symmetric and using this uh, I think can, we can quite quickly prove that we're always going to have that g k n will be equal to g k k minus n. Uh, we should be able to prove that by induction using this recurrence relation, assuming that uh, it's true for g k for k is k minus one instead, and flip these around, and it should work. Fairly easy to prove that we have symmetry from this, but as I say unable to get a nice formula from this and I had a couple of other ways of proceeding which did allow me to get some formulas so there's one way that's really quick and easy and gets us a fairly nice formula actually uh, and there's another way that's a little less easy which also gets us a pretty cool formula but uh, so I'll talk about them both so first one is you know we, we, we have a g k x is equal to 1 minus x to the k plus 1 f k x so what I'm just going to do is try and calculate this from the definition of f k x so the g k is equal to sum from n equals 0 to infinity n to the k 1 minus x to the k plus 1 x to the n and I'm going to expand that power of 1 minus x to the k plus 1 using the binomial formula x to the n and then I'm going to write something i equals 0 to k plus 1 k plus 1 choose i minus x to the i and then I'm going to multiply these together and we'll get say I'm going to write big N now so sum from big N is 0 to infinity and sum of i goes from 0, so x to the big N, sum from i equals 0 to big N, 
of um, big N minus I to the K. So here we're looking, we've got the N and I such that N plus I is equal to big N. Uh, so little n is going to be equal to big N minus I. And then I'm just going to leave I for the same notation. So K plus 1 I minus 1 to the I. dkx is equal to this and then well once let's see so once i exceeds k plus one um, this is always going to be zero And also when i is equal to big N, it's also going to be zero because you're going to have a zero here. So, hmm. Well, so we can write this in the form sum from n equals zero to k. No, no, no. Um, let's see. So when I'm trying to think that if gkx is a polynomial then for big enough big n then this should be zero um, it doesn't it's not immediately obvious is it but let's just leave it as to infinity for the time being and something like equals zero to n and minus i to the, yep I've just, just written this out again I don't need to write it out a second time. So what this gives us is that gkn is equal to n equals 0 x to the n i equals 0 to the n minus i to the k k plus 1 to the i minus 1 to the i. So this gives us a formula for gkn. Um, you can probably prove via some other ways that gk gk x is, is always going to be of degree k you, know, you could probably prove up by induction by some of the other recurrence relations i've got here so we could take n from 0 to k and i from 0 to well n will do you know so you could do n minus 1 because it's 0 when i is n but it doesn't make a difference so oops um i can get rid of that actually ah and Okay, never mind. There is a uh... so gkn is equal to this. Um, and for n bigger than k, this is going to be zero. But it isn't obvious just by looking at this formula that this is going to come to come out to be zero, though it will do. Uh, but this is this is quite a nice formula, I think. And this is, I think, is the nicest formula for the individual coefficients of gkx. Uh, another way I got, which came from a slightly different approach, and um, it's going to look like I'm just pulling something out of a hat here, uh, but um, it got me thinking, well, n to the k, you know, because because in fk, you've got n to the k cropping up, n to the kx to the n. Um, I was thinking if I can write n to the k, because uh, n to the k is kind of like n choose k, because n choose k or n choose k is n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus k plus 1 over k factorial. So you, you've got the power of n to the k over here. So I'd imagine that you could write n to the k is with some constant plus n k minus one constant. Yeah, it's a sum of n choose values that are less than or equal to k, a linear a linear combination. And if we can do that, then um, so say n to the k was equal to sum from i equals zero to k of 
an i times a constant, which I'll call um, alpha i. Then we could use what we know already about this sum, the so sum from n equals zero to infinity, to uh, get us a formula, as we studied this earlier in the chapter. Uh, this would be equal to x to the i over 1 minus x to the i plus 1. So, and play, to, played around with this for a while, and I managed to get a nice formula for these coefficients that go before v and choose k. And, and I can prove that formula, but I'm not going to... I, I, I just kind of messed around for a while, and eventually I, I noticed the, the coefficients were quite familiar, so I was wondering, uh, I just thought, oh, why, why would those coefficients be what they appear to be? And then I thought about it for a minute. So, yeah, I came up with a proof for it quite quickly. Um, so I'm thinking, if I enter the k, is the same number of maps from the set 1 to k, or k in square brackets, to 1 to set of n elements, or n in square brackets. Um, yeah, because because say you're looking at a map that goes from one to the other, then for every value between one and k, you can choose any value between one and n. So there's entered k possible maps. Phi. So I thought, oh, well, how can we, you know, split these into partitions to to partition this in in a way that involves the n choose n choose k coefficients or n choose i and so i came up with this idea so for every every collection of every subset of n in square brackets so if so i can say if it, S is a subset of N and S has high elements. We can consider maps. We consider maps from K to N, which has an image of size I. So the image. of size i and it obviously if i exceeds uh, k then there aren't going to be any such maps so there'll just be zero of them but we can still use the same argument so how many maps are there such that the image is of size i well the image that we can choose as the image any subset of n in square brackets of size i so there are then choose i possible images. And if our image uh, images of size um, i that we, we could choose to be our image, and how many, so if we partition the set of 1 to k into i classes, then we can send each of those classes to a unique um, element of this image. So, so partition that into i classes. There are k i in curly brackets partitions. And, and so for each of these partitions, each class we can associate to uh, of one of the i elements of the image. And since we could do that in any order for all of the i classes, there are i factorial ways to do it. 
And since there were entries I possible images of size I read, we could have chose, we, we have that the number of maps with image of size I is equal to this value here. So this is a number of images of size I that could possibly exist. This is a number of partitions of K into I classes. Each class will go to a unique element of the image. And this is a number of ways we can decide which class goes to what element of the image. So this gives us that n to the k is equal to sum from i equals zero, take it to infinity, but I could uh, just as well take it to be something else. I'll work out what, what I can make it to be smaller later. Uh, i factorial ki in curly brackets ni and choose i. And so since, since k is going to be constant, I'm only considering fk. Um, once i exceeds k, we know this is always going to be zero. So sum from i equals zero to infinity of i factorial. Oops, sorry. Sum i from zero to k of i factorial ki in curly brackets and choose i. So these here are the coefficients that I was talking about earlier. That was okay. Of the n choose i, such that n choose zero plus n choose one plus dot 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 to that. Uh, so something times n choose zero plus something times n choose one plus dot 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 plus something times n choose k is equal to n to the k. And these are those coefficients, or they are coefficients that work. Perhaps they're not unique, but I suspect they are. They probably are unique, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure they would be. So we can use this. Then. So we know that fkx is equal to sum from n equals zero to infinity n to the k x to the n. And using what we know here, this is another way of writing n to the k. Sum from n equals zero to infinity, sum from i equals zero to k, i factorial, k i curly brackets, n choose i x to the n. This is reordered a sum, sum from i equals zero to k. Now I'm going to put i factorial k i in curly brackets outside, the sum from n equals zero to infinity. And then I've got n choose i x to the n. We know what this is from earlier in chapter one. And so we get that sum from i equals zero to k, i factorial k i curly brackets x to the i over or minus x to the i plus one. So this is also quite a nice form for expressing fkx. It doesn't express it in the same form uh, you know, as a simple polynomial over one minus x to the k plus one. You could, you can um, play around with this to get it in this form. Though you don't have such a nice simple expression for your gkx on top anymore as you did before. It's got these factorials in it, it's got partition numbers in, which themselves require a bit of work to calculate instead of the relatively nice equation we had earlier. Uh, if I can find it. Um, no, I can't find a piece of paper with it on but uh, I can put it back up, uh, put it back up on the screen. So, yeah, so that's, that's the work I did on that. Um, not looked at the solution, not done any research online. I didn't want to, any spoilers. So, yeah, I'm gonna continue with the problems and at some point I'm gonna look at the solutions and see what, if that offers any new ideas into that, or maybe I missed something obvious or maybe they've done something exactly the same as me. And that's about all we've got time for today. Uh, goodness, if all of the questions take me this much work to work through, then it's going to take me longer to work through the questions than it is to read through the chapter. So hopefully, hopefully they'll speed up a little bit. But either way, if they, if they continue to take a long time, I'll just go on to chapter two before I finish them and I'll continue working through them. This has been a very interesting example. Um, I'm going to go on to question two before I look up the solution to this problem because um, question two involves the exponential generating 
function of the same sequences from question one. So maybe I'll learn something new about this sequence in question two. So, uh, see you next time.